story yesterday. When I saw Colin on a list of Australian artists that were going to be... Uh, Whoa. Not ready. Perfect. <laughs> well, I, can, I can talk with that on. Yeah. So when, when I saw Colin on a list of Australian artists who was, who was going to be here, I just, I went, there's no way you'll play our show. This is just too iconic. I just didn't think you'd do it. Too big. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so, but I sent the email away anyway, and lo and behold, he's... Is. This is really like a like a real pub gig. Yeah. 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 And uh, I was reminded of that because I was standing up there and I was listening to some of the uh, Australians talking at the bar and uh, there's a certain fucking frequency <laughs> in the Australian voice. It just cut through fucking metal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's very, very powerful. Yeah. A powerful frequency. Get it! That's it. Are you, are you done? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I, uh, I went to Australia when I was 14, and I, and I was saying this yesterday, but I'll say it again today. And I spoke like this, and people would say, um, "I can hear you, by the way, Chris, in my ears." Chris, I can hear you in my ears, talking. <laughs> that doesn't concern you either. <laughs> anyway, I went to um, I went to Australia when I was 14, and um, lived there for many years. And uh, I ran away. I kind of ran away from Melbourne because I couldn't stop the drink. And because uh, you know, I come from two countries with extreme alcohol problems: Scotland and Australia. <laughs> I didn't even realise uh, when I, I didn't. I wasn't a drinking man when I was young. We were uh, we were lovers of the weed, my old band. And uh, I remember we were rehearsing in 1979, and uh, and uh, we were we were very uh, driven. And Gate came around. You don't know Gate. He's a friend of mine, and he had a wee spliff of what he called Sumatran tripping grass, and we smoked that, and. Uh, we wrote uh, the song called Down by the Sea from the first Men at Work album, which was originally four hours and 40 minutes long. <laughs> I could have gone on longer, but you get a bit hungry, don't you? <laughs> and I wrote all those songs that I wrote with Men at Work, I was very, I was very high on very strong weed. I'm not trying to condone its use if there's any young, impressionable people in the audience. But um, it certainly, certainly fucking worked for me, is the truth of it. So, uh, I was down in, uh, in Melbourne recently and I went to the South Melbourne market and uh, I was walking along past the vegetable stand, or one of them, and this guy stopped me and said, Mike, Anybody ever told you you look like that bloke Colin Hay? No. And I said, yeah, they have. And I said, what's well, really weird? I said, the same fucking name as him. And he goes, yeah, that is really fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I keep making records because um, I can't think of anything else to do. But I do like it. It's a great thing to do after breakfast. The tender age of 64, I'm hoping to be discovered <laughs> here at Americana, amongst my peers, <laughs> whoever the fuck they are. <laughs> As Randy Newman said, if they were running towards me, I would embrace them. <laughs> this is a chorus for you to sing, goes tumbling down.
but it's a long time drive. I watch that old grey hand bus kick up dust as it rolls on by. I ask the man in the station, he says, son, just take a look around. There hasn't been a train through here since it all came tumbling down. But this night I surely was I made it out to the cottonwoods Slept with my feet down to the ground And in my dreams I could hear the screams As it all came tumbling down Very lucky growing up, had a mother and a father, which not everybody has. Just a wee family living in Australia. It was a very small Scottish family. We laughed a lot. I always knew that my mother's love was unconditional. So I was reminded of that just before she died about four years ago. I called her up close to her 90th birthday, my 60th. I said, I'm coming down to see you. She said, oh, that's lovely, son. She said, I'm going to get through my 90th and your 60th, and then I'm going to slip away. I said, oh, that's your plan, is it? <laughs> she said, yes, I've had enough. Too much pain. I went, okay, well, I'll see you in a minute. So I arrived and I hung out with her for a few months before she passed. And uh, it was a beautiful time. And this one night, I was watching a movie with her, where she lived. And I was in the movie, which made it even better. <laughs> I was with that guy, Guy Pierce. Guy, Guy, Guy Pierce. <laughs> it's called Jack Irish. And I, in the film, I was a bad man. I was a murdering policeman. Yeah. And in this particular scene that I was watching with my mother, I pushed this guy, I pushed, I pushed, uh, this guy in a wheelchair into a swimming pool. <laughs> I was drowning him with one of those swimming pool poles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just as, just as I did that, I turned around at my mother and she said, ah, he probably deserved yeah. that. <laughs> 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 
do no wrong. Close family. How do you stand up? <laughs> My mother was like a film star that just never did any movies. <laughs> A couple of days before she went, I'm sitting on the edge of the bed. Holding her hand. And she just looked at me. She said, we had a good time. Give me son. Now, it was a 
soundtrack a few years ago. It's the closest thing to a hit that I've had for many, many years, and it was, it was unintentional. Well, I suppose you always want your tunes to do well, but um, this one was in a soundtrack for a film called Garden State. And, uh, <laughs> it's funny when you start a clap and nobody joins in, you've got a decision to make. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this was uh, this was good because um, the soundtrack went platinum, which is a lot of people. You know, it's a million people went out and bought the CD, which is um, when people were buying CDs, and uh, so that was exciting because. Um, the record, I mean, the song came out 10 years before that on an album of mine called Transcendental Highway, which did not go platinum. <laughs> I think it reached mahogany. <laughs> mahogany status, which is a fine wood. <laughs> but it's not, uh, not platinum. The good thing about having a song in a platinum selling CD is that you get money in the mail. And that's exciting. <laughs> Nothing much better than that. You might be wondering how much money you make because there's people here who write music and you know all that stuff and uh, are, are wondering this about if you have a song in a platinum selling CD how much money does come through the mail well I'll give you a ballpark figure don't sell your house and go and live in the Bahamas you'll just have to come home embarrassed in front of your friends but if you're thinking of um, renovating your house, your kitchen, not your whole house, but if you're thinking of renovating your kitchen, go right ahead. I'll give you an idea. If you're thinking of going, try to figure out whether to go with the, the real granite or the fake granite, go with the fucking real granite, you'll be fine. So anyway, there's nothing much better, as you well know, uh, than getting money in the mail, except that experience I had, you know, going to the doctor and when you have one of those colonoscopy things <laughs> and you come out of the twilight, the doctor says to you, your bum's okay. <laughs> That's a fucking good day right there. Yeah. You're getting money in the mail, comes a close second. <laughs> it's not so much fun getting money in the mail and your bum's not okay. <laughs> This is called, I just don't think I'll ever get over you. You do, don't you? You get over people. It takes a wee while, but... It just comes you on, comes over you all of a sudden. You're sad for a while, then you find yourself down your local coffee place having a latte and you think, Fuck, I feel pretty good. <laughs> and you're off and running. I drink good coffee every morning comes from a place that's far away when I'm done I feel like talking Without you here, there is less to say. I don't want you thinking I'm unhappy. What is closer?
basket And I shook the hand of time And I knew And if I lived Till I could know Longer climb My stairs I just don't think I'll ever get over you I'll play a song uh, that I wrote with my old band just because um, we're, uh, well, the big songs. <laughs> and uh, they were very good to me. Still are. This is called Overkill, this tune. Yeah! Father used to sing this song to me when he went. <laughs> Drive me to the airport to take me back to when I was coming back to the States. He'd croon my songs to me because he thought it would annoy me. <laughs> He'd go, I can't get to sleep. <laughs> That's one of yours, you know. <laughs> Funny the things you miss. All right. I used to have guys that would give me finely tuned guitars between songs. <laughs> That's the first fucking thing that goes. <laughs> right. 
Sing along with this one if you know the words. Even if you don't, you can just go, eh, you know. It's always good when people sing along and they don't know the words. I love that. People just stand going. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your time. I had a good time playing for you. I can get to sleep. Think about the implications Diving in too deep Possibly the complications Especially at night I worry over situations I know we'll be alright Perhaps it's just imagination Day after day It reappears Shows the fear Ghosts appear And fade away Alone between the sheets Only brings exasperation It's time to walk the streets Smell the desperation there's pretty lights And though there's little variation Nullifies the night From overkill Day after day It reappears Night after night My heartbeat shows the fear